In Kestra 0.23, there is a brand new no-code and multi-panel editor to make creating your workflows even easier. When you first jump in, it's going to feel quite familiar, but there are a few differences to help make building your workflows a little bit easier. The first thing you'll notice is at the top of the screen, there's now a bunch of different options for the editor. We've got flow code, no code, topology, documentation, files, and blueprints. The goal here is with more things getting added, it got a little bit overwhelming in the previous editor. Now it's super clear what each thing is, and now you've got the option of selecting exactly what you want open and where you want it, whereas previously it was fairly limiting. Now, if I was to open the topology view, I just have to click on it and it's gonna open a brand new panel in the multi-panel editor. So now if you've got something like an ultra wide monitor, you can have more panels inside of the flow editor. Whereas previously you were only restricted to two items at a time. Along with these panels, you can easily resize them so I can make them bigger and smaller. I can easily move them around. If I want to move topology to the documentation one, I can do that. So now I can switch between the two tabs here to be able to switch to whatever I want open. Really nice. The same applies for if I open up the files editor and create a new file here called hello.txt, I can now open that and have that side by side with my flow code. So I can actually get rid of the file explorer if I wanted by just closing it like so. And then I can just do hello world, hello world like so. And now, as you can see here, I can see both my namespace file and my flow at the same time, which was not previously possible in the last editor. You can also decide whether you want to save your flow or the namespace file with this little save icon in the top right. So the save button will save everything, but you've also got the option to save individual panels as well loads of options there to make it easy to build your flows. Now, the real star of the show is the new no code option. So let's have a look at that. Now, I'm just gonna bring this over on top of the documentation so we can see it side by side with the YAML editor here. Now, as you can see here, I can see the flow ID, namespace, and other properties that a flow may have, such as description. Now, you'll notice that as soon as I add them to the no code editor, it's gonna also add it into YAML. So as I add a description, my flow, as you can see here, it automatically added it to the YAML code at the same time. So you can switch between using no code or full code at your leisure. When we scroll down, we get options for the building blocks that are essential for building a workflow. Starting with tasks, I can press the add button here and then I get the option here to select a task. So I'm just gonna add a simple Python task. So if I type in Python, we can see I can select Python script and now it's gonna add that directly underneath. Now I need to add an ID, so I'm gonna call this Python. So here I can put in my Python script I can then also click on optional properties. So things like before command. So I could do pip install pandas if I wanted. I can also uh, add environment variables. So I could put in example, hello. So there's my environment variable. I've got input files as an option. I've got log level too. So I can say set the log level to info. And I can also specify that I want to have my namespace files enabled as well. So as you can see, loads of options here for being able to configure this entirely in no code. But the thing that I really like is that it's done it entirely in the YAML code as well. So if I now press save, but actually before pressing save, I can switch back to the no code editor. So I'm not stuck in that task. I can go around, edit other things, go back to that task. I'm gonna press save now to save that task and make sure it's saved. I can reorder the task, so I can easily put Python above or I can put it below, however I like. I could also add a trigger. So let's add a schedule trigger as I quite like using those. Uh, as you can see, the trigger has been added. I can just call it schedule, set the cron expression to at daily, like so. And now I can press close trigger and I can press save. So again, the workflow has built itself and I haven't touched the YAML code. Very nice. And there's all those other properties that you'd find such as errors, finally, after execution and plugin defaults. So as you can see, 
The new editor brings a lot of functionality to Kestra, and this is just a sneak peek. I'm planning to do a full series on this editor in the future on how to build complex examples inside of Kestra. So if you'd be interested to see that, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.